two things that I use to help me manage stress, manage my life, and do the things that I want to do, a bullet journal. You can go to bulletjournal.com. This is my bullet journal. Yours can be whatever you want it to be. In my bullet journal, I, uh, I record my day, what, I'm, what I did do, and what I'm going to do. This is July. These columns are what I weigh. And I don't particularly care what I weigh, but there's a, I know what I weigh because I know what I want to weigh. I like to walk around between 205 and 215. And when I start to tick up, I just make some minor, you know, I just make some, some adjustments, dial it in a little bit, get back, you know, stay where I want to stay. Um, and then how much did I sleep? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you about this percentage in a minute, but um, I also do intermittent fasting. I recommend that you explore intermittent fasting, especially if you weigh more than you want to weigh. Intermittent fasting is all of human history up until a couple hundred years ago. Your body was designed and evolved and adapted to intermittent fast because you couldn't drive through past a building and get 10,000 calories thrown through your window for $3 up until about 50 years ago. Your body did not get designed to eat three meals a day every day and stack calorie on top of calorie. Your body was in fact designed to wander around hungry for a long time and then find a lot to eat and sit down and eat it and stay there until you were done eating. That's what you were evolved to do. Only in this tiny fraction of the end of humanity have we done something different. Explore intermittent fasting. And then every day I go out in the sun, I read the Bible, I learn something. I'm currently teaching myself Spanish. I write in a journal, I drink 100 ounces of water, and I record whether or not I ingested any toxins. Intentionally. <laughs> Primarily alcohol, but not just. And then what did I do to train myself? Weights, walk, cycle, whatever, okay? So I keep this to keep myself accountable. But I also plan my day. I do something called time blocking, okay? And I recommend um, mysweetsetup.com for that. Mysweetsetup.com. When I know what I need to do tomorrow, like I have lots of days, I'm a trial lawyer, so there's lots of days that I don't have to go to court, but I do have to do stuff. And so instead of just having a to-do list, I have a to-do list. But the day before, like last night, I would sit down and I would say, at 8.30, I'm going to do this. And I put it on my calendar as if I had to go somewhere and do it. It's an appointment with myself. For me, it works. I time block my days. Okay? So something to explore. Um, and when I know where I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to be doing, my stress level goes down. Because a lot of stress that you're experiencing comes from this overwhelming sensation that you're supposed to be doing something and you have 400 things on your to-do list. What should I be doing? I don't know. And you get, per you get paralyzed by the overwhelming options. You can only do a couple things a day realistically. Pick them do them, mark them off, and make another time block for tomorrow. When you, when you are where you're supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to be doing, and deciding what you're going to do, rather than just letting your day blow up in your face, you're going to feel a lot better about life. Final thing I'm going to share with you, I'll take some questions in a minute. We now live in a world where we are saturated, overwhelmed, and attacked by external things that we either allow or go get. And it, I think it terribly, I think it, I think it undermines our quality of life to let outrage porn, left or right, I don't care. I don't think it's a coincidence that if you have cable TV or satellite radio, the, 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 uh, the two channels that hate each other are right next to each other. That can't be an accident. It's like they're fucking with us. Right. <laughs> right? It's like, if you want to be told how smart you are and how stupid and contemptible they are, channel 25. And all day long, 24 hours a day, you're the smartest person in the world because you think like me. 
Now here's what we think, just in case you forgot. And those other people suck. And they're not even human. But if you accidentally hit the switch, just click a little, just look like it's like, oh no, no, no. They are the stupid ones. We believe this. Cable TV, satellite radio. Where did that happen? I can't even get a dot small enough to tell you where that emerged. And how much of your time now do you spend getting saturated with outrage porn? Until 10 years ago, the answer was none. It wasn't there. You couldn't get it. And now, hours a day, people, how many times you've been to somebody's house or business and they got Fox News on 24 hours a day? Is that helpful? Critical thinking? No. If you really stand there and watch it and you weren't an American and you didn't care, you would be like, Jesus Christ, why do these people hate all these other people so much because they do or don't want to do something about student loans? It seems like this is out of proportion to like the real like thing, right? I don't care what your policy position is, but this, this method of, a ne of thinking about it can't be helpful. So, um, social media, here's what I found out. I found myself spending a lot of time on social media because of course I'm like immortally famous. <laughs> and for a while it was fun. For a while it was fun. But then I got to the point where I was like, you know, what would happen? It, it started to be a lot of time. And that's really all any of us have. You can have money, you can have a car, you can have a job. You can, you, but all you really have is time, and which you might run out of tomorrow or today. So I thought, well, is my life going to be better if I take these 10, 15, 20 hours a week away from social media and reallocate those 10, 15, 20 hours a week to read a book, go for a walk, talk to my wife, or exercise. Well, duh, you can't even argue the opposite. If I take 20 hours away from Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and put that into reading a book, talking to my wife, going for a walk, and lifting weights, is my life better? Yes. Doubtlessly, unarguably better. So I did it. Here's what I found out. It wasn't the reallocation of the time that, first, that I first noticed being the benefit. The first benefit that I noticed was that I had deleted lust, greed, schadenfreude, envy, contempt from my life. I could have taken those 15 hours and sat in a dark closet and been way better off because I wasn't thinking to my, and I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna be real, I wasn't looking at Facebook going, damn, I'd do that. Or, the fuck you do to deserve that? Or, whatever, negative emotion I was creating, that I was going and getting out of the ether and bringing into my life. So I did, I deleted it. Felt way better. And I generally limit myself, I try, you know, I try to create some friction before I consume any of that, so I don't keep those apps on my phone. If I, if I, if I'm sitting in an airport and I got 45 minutes to kill and I want to catch up on whatever, you know, intel I can get off of Facebook, whatever, I'll download it, look it over, and then I'll remind myself and be, rem and be reminded, now, this is why I quit, <laughs> and I delete it again, okay? So it was addition by subtraction. This week I decided th to do a little further. I was wearing a whoop strap and an Apple Watch and all these things. I kind of let a lot of a lot of distractions literally become attached to my body or stuck in my pocket all the time. And I started looking at my bullet journals and I noticed that I didn't really think I was doing this, but it turned out that 40-50% of the month I was drinking alcohol or something else that was, you know, like that. And um, I was like, that, that seems like a lot if I think about it. So this week I decided to do something, I'm gonna, I challenge myself to do 30 days of what I'm gonna call straight edge and analog. Something to consider. I don't know how long I'll do it. I hope I make it 30 days. But what I've decided to do is, I'm not gonna have any devices on me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna track uh, using a Whoop or, a, or an Apple Watch. I'm not gonna track steps or anything like that. 
I'm going to be, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to not consume social media, porn, alcohol, marijuana, or any other mental or physical to uh, toxin, and I'm going to intentionally separate myself from all these devices that have accumulated in my life that are just one distraction after another, binging, dinging, and telling me something that I didn't need to know now or maybe ever. Oh, a cat walked through my security camera. Oh, good thing I knew that. <laughs> so I've, I started two days ago, and I'll let you know how it goes, but I kind of think I'm going to be better off in 30 days. And then I'll, then I'll consider you know, how much more I want to try to squeeze out of myself. I'll leave you with this thought. This is one of the Stoics. Be strict with yourself and tolerant of others. Be strict with yourself and tolerant of others. Set the bar high for yourself, but understand that you don't know why or what's going on with someone else. They may be doing the best they can.